This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Every year for the Super Bowl, there are tons of different markets you can bet into. And the typical ones, you know, the reception props, the touchdown scores, MVP, but... There's a lot of other nonsense out there that you can bet on, too, and I'm not going to be an expert when it comes to those. But we're going to bring on an expert for today in Joe Ostrowski, picking his brain on all the odd markets that I have no idea about because Joe has done the research. He can educate us on where there is value potentially for Super Bowl 58 over at FanDuel Sportsbook and beyond. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here, as mentioned, by Joe Ostrowski. Check him out on Twitter at Joe Strauss. You can find him on BetQL Daily every morning. He's also on every Saturday morning at 670 The Score in Chicago as well. Joe, it is a pleasure to have you on for today. How are you doing? Jim, It's uh, I love this annual tradition that we have here, speaking early on in Super Bowl week. So that means the last time we spoke, I was in Arizona covering the Super Bowl last year and i uh, i vaguely remember it because i was in the process of uh, getting covid i think <laughs> one of those days i actually left after a couple of days but yeah. i'm not blaming you i don't think it was our internet connection okay uh, you okay gave me COVID. i'm blaming the fat the, the the fat guy that was uh, coughing all over me on the on the flight out to arizona i was like uh, in my head i'm like this guy's probably got COVID. And then yeah. like a day later, I'm like, yeah. And now it's this I, it guy's got me. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh. yeah. So Brilliant. how long do I have to stay in the hotel before I have to go back? I don't know. I don't know. So does that mean that, that we're cursed? Is that official that like our, our discussions here are cursed or do you not buy into that? No, I've been sick over the last month. So now we're oh, clear sailing. No, okay. We're so we're fine. Yeah, well, yeah. It's clear sailing. Okay. So we got it out of the way. We're good yeah. to go. And we can break down these props with, with no sweats. Right. Yes, a hundred percent. I can't wait to talk about some of this stuff. And uh, yeah, it's we we saw line movement last week. Very little prop movement, which I find interesting. But we we, we could talk about different strategies early yeah. versus betting late because we still have at the time of this recording six days to go. So I do think a lot of things are going to change. But uh, I can't wait. Uh, am I sick of the eighty-seven Taylor Swift props that are out there? Maybe, but some of them are amusing. Well, we've got we've got plenty of those. We can talk about potentially as well. Uh, every movement, every prop I've seen move is moved towards the over. Maybe that means you can, if you're looking for some unders, take them out, check them out later on this week. You know, maybe we'll talk mm-hmm. about that a bit later on today as well. But we got a full week of shows here on covering the spread. Uh, we already broke down the game in depth with Doctor Ed Fang. You can find that by going to the Covering the Spread podcast feed. Ed broke down what his numbers say about this year's uh, game. Also talked on an interception prop with Ed. You can find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, FanDuel TV Plus. Tomorrow I'm breaking down same game parlays. I like for FanDuel Sportsbook for this game. We have got a full player prop breakdown. With Joe's guy, Ryan Williams, coming up on Thursday, along with Tom Vecchio. And, of course, we'll talk some live betting with Ed Miller on Friday. All right here in the same feed and also on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. Happy Super Bowl to all, this, to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl, but also FanDuel has bets like who will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers. Customers, join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 533 42 in Arizona, 1 888 789 7777, or visit ccpg.org/slash chat in Connecticut, 109 Win in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, visit chaosgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 Stop in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1 800 Gambler.net in West Virginia, 1 800 522 
4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Now, Joe, our primary objective for today is to identify nonsense props to bet. But, okay. you know, you're a football guy, too. So I figured I would selfishly also ask you about this game. Uh, we got the 49ers by two and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total of this game is 47 and a half. So overall read for you on this game from a football perspective. It is wild, Jim, because it, early in the week, like every time you check your favorite sports book, which I'm sure many is FanDuel, you're going to find new props posted. Yeah. And, and one that I know you're going to have your eye on. I just found one that says, not will he, but how is Gronk going to miss the kick of destiny? Wow. How? Why hit the crossbar? Wide left? Wide right? No faith. Hit an upright? Left? No faith. Uh, is double doink on there? Not to, sorry, Chicago. Oh. But like, you know, like, sorry. <laughs> My, my I bad. See double dunk. I see it's all pretty solid plus money. Wide left, wide right, hits crossbar, hits left upright. Is it is it right void if he makes short. it? But well, there's another prop. Will he there is a will okay. he make it one? Okay, because like I've you know spent the that. last week, I've the amount of my life I've spent reading house rules the past week is mind numbing. I can't golf, read it anymore. I know golf for you. I had NASCAR too. It was like because NASCAR had the clash and like FanDuel was refunding all bets if the if the driver didn't make it to the to the main event, but not every book did. Uh, there were like a couple others that did, and it's like it influences so much. So like I spent reading that, and then I had the Wyndham Clark ticket uh, for for golf on uh, Sunday, and it's like. Mm -hmm. I'm just so sick of like Google literally said you visit often to uh, a sports books uh, house rules. And I was like, this just seems like rude. Like, why are you being passive aggressive here? Did anything work out in your favor? Because it feels like it never does. Oh, it did. Yeah. Oh, it did. I, Good. So I bet Wyndham pre-tournament 80 to one. Yeah. And uh, that book. So like FanDuel and I think uh, some others had it where if it's 36 holes and official winner is declared, then you then you get a payout. This one is 54 holes uh, mm -hmm. for a PGA Tour event and 36 for a Euro Tour event. But they had done 54. And it was a pre-tournament wager, so I was okay. Uh, but like, I had to like, you know, that paranoia where you think you're not going to get the money and you keep checking. Mm. Oh, that's why I, I asked. That. That's why I assumed that you were on the negative right. side of this. No, it was paranoia because I it was a good thing, and I was worried it wasn't going to come through. But if you had bet somewhere else, there was a chance that you would. Have I think to most money. books with the, with the bet that I made because it was pre-tournament. I think most books that I read through would have honored the bet. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was good, which was nice. Well, as far as uh, zooming out on this game, <laughs> it's it's like these teams are similar, but they're also not. Like There are certain elements of this matchup where you're like, okay, I, I understand why they're similar. I, if we're removing Mahomes, Purdue, because at uh, Purdue, um, sorry, thinking about yesterday, I'm still <laughs> mad about that. Did you see the officiating? Anyways. The Wisconsin game? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I feel like every game the officials are trying to make sure that Purdue. I mean, they did it to Northwestern too in the Purdue game. So, I oh, I know that's why I yeah. brought it. as why I was top of yeah. mind talking to you. <laughs> My God, the free throw discrepancy. I'm not one to complain about it, but I was with Chris Collins on that one. It Chris Collins insane. will complain about it. Don't you worry, he's got you covered. I know he will. So, outside of the, the Mahomes Purdy uh, comparison, you look at the head coaches, both offensive geniuses, and that's why I find it interesting what's been going on uh, this offseason in the uh, the hiring cycle. If you look at the clear weaknesses on defense, it's the same for both teams. It's stopping the run. Um, is that going to impact this game? I don't know. It's certainly something that everybody's talking about. I look at it as, ah, are we sure it's that important? Because both these teams are terrible at it, and they're both playing in the Super right. Bowl for the, for the <laughs> title. So I don't know that it that matters all that much. Uh, both strong at tight ends, uh, pretty strong at running backs. So that's where the props could come into play, going against poor rushing defenses. Uh, obviously, Kansas City's passing defense is much better. But, you know, overall, we're going to talk about Reed and Shanahan and the quarterback play and some of these uh, the offensive star power. But why are these two teams here? defense it's defense and i find it amazing uh the total started at 48 it ticked down to 47 and a half early sharpish money but it i don't hear a lot of chatter about the total gym it has not budged in over a week 
We've been sitting at that number of 47 and a half. Now we saw early movement on the point spread, KC money, and then we saw some large wagers on San Francisco. So people are labeling that sh sharps on San Francisco, public on KC. I don't think it's quite that easy because yeah. there are sharp betters that are also on Kansas City. They're going to back Mahomes as an underdog, um, like so many people are going to talk about this week. But yeah, they're similar, but they're also not. I think not talked about enough in this era of NFL. Three Super Bowls in five years is a dynasty. Yeah. And Mahomes is one game away from that. And uh, the storyline that I'm truly interested in, even more so than Mahomes, Kyle Shanahan. Are you finally going to break through? Are we going to see it? We, we've seen a Super Bowl loss, a couple of NFC Championship losses, and maybe the biggest blunder of his career, 28 to three, when he was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. A lot of people still blaming him because he was going too aggressive at a time where that's what we want out of coaches, unless your name is Dan Campbell. And I'm okay with criticizing Dan Campbell. But uh, yeah, it's is Shanahan going to break through? Because if he doesn't, you could say it's Reed, it's Mahomes. What are you going to do? But I think a lot of people are going to call him a choke artist depending on how it goes down if they end up losing so a lot of uh interesting storylines to the to this game and you know they're similar but they're also not well i think that uh going back to that 28 to 3 game the issue that kyle shanahan had back then was his running backs were Devonte freeman and tevin coleman for that game mm -hmm. and it's hard to run the football when the opposing team knows you're going to run the football but now it's christian mccaffrey I think that makes it a very different dynamic for him. And also we've seen him buck the narrative. He can't come from behind the fourth quarter with the comebacks against Green Bay and the comeback against Detroit. So I feel like yes. it's a different version of Kyle Shanahan than what we've seen so far because he has that running game. But also with Purdy and this this passing and doing what they're doing, I think he can kind of win even if they do fall behind early too. And, and as you alluded to it, you're right. The perception is, oh my God, this guy can't come back. But also, um, why don't we talk about the record of all NFL coaches down by at least eight <laughs> right. points in the fourth <laughs> quarter? It's not going to be no. good. The no. problem is when you have that zero there, people right. end up harping on it. And, you know, most coaches, it might have a couple of, of comeback wins in that spot. You're right about that. Like, you're not able to bleed much clock if it's a three and out and you're trying right. to run the ball at least a couple of times. So that's that's one of those situations that's always easier said than done. And also in this instance, yes, McCaffrey and also uh, Debo and also, you know, Purdy's been using his legs and yeah. the Kansas City rush defense. Like, like we talked about, that's the big weakness on that chief side. But game script can certainly uh, come into play. You've got to make sure it's not, we've seen a couple awful Purdy games. And I know yeah. people that that's where people point to and say, see, this is why he's not an MVP, but you know, it could happen. Like we saw a four interception game from this guy, not that long ago. Right. It can happen. He can have bad games, but he can also come back from down 24 seven. He did benefit mm -hmm. from a ball off of a defender's face mask. Like that was luck. Um, that was not Purdy magic. That was very much luck. Uh, but I think showing that ability to come back is interesting. I think one of the things too is Andy Reid was also thought of as a choke artist before he got the job done. Uh, timeout, uh, you know, two minute management was hideous for him. So yeah, I feel like with a coach, it's kind of like you, you don't have the ability to win a big game until you do. And has Shanahan gotten there yet with that win over the, the Lions? I think you could contend yes, but I understand why there would be hesitancy to crown him before he actually does it on this stage. It's also like the thought process on this game with a lot of people. What are you valuing more? Okay, the reason that San Francisco is favored to win this game is what they did over the larger sample size of the regular season when they right. were the Super Bowl favorite all year. And the team that's played better is Kansas City. But because their quarterback is Patrick Mahomes, nobody's talking about them getting shut out in the second half right. of the last time we, we saw them play. So that's the other you know push and pull as far as uh, this matchup. I don't know about you, Jim, but I'm having a, a tougher time with the side yeah, I, I feel better about the under if I'm looking at side or total, I would feel better about the under 47 and the hook than picking a side. I, I get the argument for the KC side, but also part of me, I, I'm having a, a tough time getting there. It's such a short number. History tells us that most likely 
the team that wins this game is going to be the team that also covers the point spread. We're not talking about a situation like, like it was in the NFC Championship game, like either uh, San Francisco game where they're going to win and, and not cover the point spread because it's such a large number. Right. I laid the two uh, with the Niners when it got there, like at open. And then I saw it go to one, like 15 minutes later. I was like, oh gosh, I uh, made a, a massive mistake. And I feel a lot ooh. better now, but I felt real stupid for a bit. So I do yeah, like the Niners. But, I, hear, I yeah. hear people say that, but okay. What are the chances it's going to fall on one or two? Well, see, that was when I was talking about it. Uh, when we recorded last Monday, it was uh -huh. one and a half. And the yeah. money line is minus 118. It's like, sure, the odds that it falls on one are not high. Like, yeah, I think it's like three. It's like 4% of all games land on one. But the gap between the implied odds for the money line versus laying the one actually did indicate the money line is a better play there. Now it's minus 130. That's different. Yeah. So I think we're in a different situation now where I, you know, I get what you're saying for sure. I think uh, throughout the rest of this week, it's going to be similar to the movement last week. Mm -hmm. I think it, we, we've seen that the, the ground floor is one. Right. Yeah. It's not getting to pick them because that yeah. was the conversation a week ago. Oh, there's so much steam on the Chiefs that could this get to a pick them? Could we see a flipping of the favorites like we saw last year? No, right. I don't think that's going to happen unless we get some crazy injury news. It feels like it's going to be between one and you know two. It's Fandles not going to be three like, either, I don't think. Yeah. No chance. No, no chance. One and two and a half. And yeah. Fandles, the only one stepping out there at two and a half, which I right. find really interesting. You look everywhere. The consensus yeah. seems to be two, but for the last like five days, Vandal has not been worried about putting two and a half out there, which I would assume is bringing in even more Kansas City money, which is also telling me that Vandal isn't worried about taking more Kansas City money. Yeah, we've talked to John Sheeran, the director of training. He's OK taking a stand on certain things um, okay. and. I don't know if that means that they're higher on the Niners than the consensus market is, or mm -hmm. if they're just okay taking more bets. I, I honestly don't know because uh, I've not talked to him recently with regards to this, but it is different from the market where you have mostly twos out there right now. Now, Joe, you'd mentioned props. Uh, you were talking about the running backs. You were talking about movement. You've seen the prop market. Any traditional props you're looking at for this, uh, for this game? Yeah, you know, um, first, as far as the movement goes, not a ton. It's been kind of minimal. We always yeah. expect some of the big name players for, for the props to jump up. Um, but there is one common thread, and it's Brock Purdy. There's been movement on the majority of his props, which I do find interesting. The passing yards have decreased by three. Not something we typically happen uh, Super Bowl week. We've seen the pass attempts drop one full pass attempt, 32 and a half to 31 and a half. And one of the props that I did like, um, and I'm not saying I'm changing my opinion because, because of the number, but I did circle Purdy rushing yards last week. I did like that number. It was 10 and a half, and now we're up to 12 and a half. Uh, in the two playoff games, he's had five, six attempts. So even at 12 and a half, I still like it. Obviously, you're going to like it a little bit more at 10 and a half. 11 and a half. So certainly looking there also rushing other rushing ones, Pacheco. Um, now two of the chiefs playoff games have been blowouts. So they've been leaning, they were leaning on him in the game is obvious what was going to happen. He was getting 24 rushing attempts. Is that a possibility in the game? Yeah, I, I think it's a possibility. If, if there's one side that has blowout factor, as strange as this is sounds, I would lean to the underdog more of a blowout factor. Cause just, it just doesn't happen with Mahomes. He's a, he's not going to sure yeah. he could lose. He might not cover the spread, but as far as uh, getting blown out, yeah, yeah that's not going to happen. There's a reason like whatever number it is, you can just tease Kansas <laughs> City especially when they're getting points. Like if you had another game to go with it, like I think a lot of people would be talking about that if especially if you expect it to be a lower scoring game that you could get a plus eight and a half with Patrick Mahomes. Like, that <laughs> would be pretty darn appealing. Um those are a couple of the rushing ones that stand out. Uh, receiving Kelsey. And I know it's going to be so popular. He's been on a tear. And yeah. then if you look at San Francisco's defense, the amount of times that they were lit up this year by tight ends, they gave up 105 yards to the position against Detroit. Um, remember McBride going off the Cardinals had 172 yards from tight ends in that matchup late in the season. Minnesota, I mean, yeah, you've got a great weapon there. And Hawkinson, the Rams recently, too. They're not 
good at defending the tight end. And how many players does Mahomes trust at this point? Two. It's that's it, right? It's just him and Rice, right? It, that's what it seems like. So, and, and he's just been going off in the playoffs, like late in the regular season. What's going on with Kelsey? Oh, maybe he's going to retire at the end of the year. And then the playoffs started and he's been going on an absolute tear. So I'm surprised that we're not already at the mid seventies. Yeah. I think this will tick up once we get to later in the week. So 70 and a half isn't a, isn't a bad play. You know, the other tight end spot, I was not expecting to be making a case for this one, but the number is so low on Kittle. It's 46 and a half at some spots, 46 and a half receiving yards. I'm like, oh man, I know it's a tough pass defense, but you look at Kittle and I kind of think that, yeah, 50, we can get to 50 and in garbage time games, I'm not saying this, I expect to be a closer game, but I did look at, at the few San Francisco garbage time games. Like they, Purdy just goes to him nonstop. Yeah. He had a 176 in another in one of the games, 149 in another. So because of the number, I I lean Kittle like the others that I mentioned more. And I was looking at MVS as well. He played oh, yeah. 86% of the snaps. He and, ran the most routes in the team in the conference. Yeah. So I was looking at longest reception for him. I believe that number was 12 and a half. Uh, when I was taking taking a look at MVS. So, you know, I'm sure part of that was a a Hardman punishment, which which <laughs> I bet under, I think it was 10 and a half uh, for him. And he played one snap, Jim, yeah. one snap. So are we, are we going to see a repeat of that right now? I haven't even seen Hardman props being listed, but he if, played one snap, which meant that all bets and understood. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. Thank you so much. I, maybe they knew that yeah. uh, is, are they going to post numbers for Hardman this time? I'm not quite sure, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, this is what a lot of, people that get a lot of money down on props are going to tell you earlier in the week. And I still consider this the early part because the majority of bets that come yeah. in are going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday mm -hmm. early. You target the overs. And that's why I ended up talking about a lot of the overs. And then late, if you want to come back on the other side, a lot of times there's opportunity, but it, a lot of the pros that Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, they're betting a lot of player prop unders. Right. And that's the time to do it. Like I said, I was talking before about, uh, I had, so I think MVS is a terrible player to bet baseline receiving yardage numbers on. Um, yes. I did take his over 18 and a half receiving yards because I was like, that's just way too low. He's better suited for these alt markets because he's crazy volatile and mm -hmm. you want to benefit from that volatility versus being stuck by it. But like for him, it was so low. I took it. Um, but I think that the better markets for him are 40 plus is plus two thirty, fifty 50 plus is plus 360. That's where I want to go for MVS. But you mentioned Kittle. And 47 and a half is a good number. Uh, his his average yards and scrimmage per game in games where they've all been healthy is 62.4. So he's well above that number. However, Joe, I think there's a better market for George Kittle. Okay. And that better market Touch is him. 70 to 1 for MVP, potentially. Oh, no. Hypothetically. No, 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 no. Okay. 70 to 1. Okay. I got to take the number into account. 70, 70 to, one to 1 for, MVP. for a guy. Give me, give me the had... stat line he, he, he needs for to have a real conversation. Voters are like, yes, George Kittle over those other offensive pieces. What kind of stat line are we talking about? I think that a stat line that could win him that would be three receptions, 67 yards, three touchdowns, which is the exact stat line he had against Dallas on October 8th. I think that stat line's winning him MVP. He did that this year. He can get you 100 plus receiving yards. He's done that a, a good number of times. He can get you multiple touchdowns. I think if he does that with how much the universe despises giving Brock Purdy credit for anything, I yeah. kind of think that's in the range of possibilities, especially when it's 70 to 1. I took it to 80 before the conference championship, thought I might get a better better movement in my favor on that number. Has not budged a ton. But I think it's 70 to one. That's where I kind of want to go for my Kittle exposure. Okay. There are some things you said there that I agree and some that I disagree. Give me the disagree first. Okay. The the disagree part is um, that he can win it with three touchdowns. Now, yeah. <laughs> okay. When a couple of weeks ago, I was actually looking at this and I circled that exact same game. I'm like, we've seen this before. Kittle can yeah. have a three touchdown game. Um, I know the number, and it's hard to get away from the conversation of, of the number. 
Mm -hmm. But if Kittle has three touchdowns, per that injury. means Mahomes probably has at least four, right? Yeah. I mean, are they going to pass on Mahomes? I mean, I'm Purdy. I'm I, yeah. I'm, I'm I think playing. they will pass on Purdy because it's Purdy. I think if, if he has four passing touchdowns, they're not going to give him the MVP. I don't know, man. If it's all the Kittle, like that's that's my my thought process here. Is yeah, people seem very res if it weren't Purdy as the quarterback, like if if it were I don't know, like Rasheed Rice and he scored three touchdowns, I think they're giving to Mahomes there. But because it's Purdy, I think there'll be more resistance. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually agree with that statement. Be yeah. And that's why I found myself looking for value on the San Francisco side right. in this specific market, because right. I think they'll be looking for any way to not give it Correct. To, to Purdy, just like we did with the MVP conversation. So that's why long, if I'm playing long shots, I'm looking on the San Francisco side. On Correct. the KC side, I think the list is two, you know, and maybe I'm being a little bit generous. But yeah, on the San Francisco side, so let's stay there. I think that's fair. I think it's funny that the dog quarterback in this game is the right. favorite and it's not close right that's how people feel about purdy now i'm not going to knock somebody that says i'm betting cmc at plus 450 that yep. makes that makes sense to me he's going to be the offensive player of the year we'll find out uh, uh that on thursday night when uh he's awarded that honor and people love him. And they think he's he's the engine that makes everything go and mm -hmm. i have a tough time arguing that one sure. so cmc is a good bet um, can I, you know, last week, no, a few weeks ago, the number that came down the most on the San Francisco side with the MVP was actually Ayuk. Yeah. His number was cut in half. It's like, wait, why is his number going from a hundred down to 50 to one based on what, you know, Debo, that was the talk going into the NFC title game. Is he going to play? Is he going to play? Okay, if he plays, it's just going to be a decoy. Well, that was not the case. Yeah. Too. Like, there's a possibility that he could make it. I did take one um, San Francisco long shot a long time ago, and the number has not changed, which kind of annoys me. Doesn't mean I'm good. You know, I guess I want to win a CLB trophy or something. Um, <laughs> I bet on Nick Bosa a while back at okay. triple digits, but whatever. Do I think he's going to win it? No. What would he have to do? It's, he'd have to do a Von Miller. Yeah, It'd probably have to be a lower scoring game, mm -hmm. two and a half sacks minimum, um, even though he has the reputation and he probably needs a turnover um, or a touchdown. I'd say touchdown for most players, but with with Bosa, maybe he doesn't need a touchdown because yeah. of everything that he's already accomplished. It's been a while, like the last couple are Von Miller and Malcolm Smith. I mean, that's it on the defensive side. So it. That's a difficult one to land on someone. I mean, maybe somebody has a crazy game like, you know, Green Law, which you could find way down the board, but but probably not. I, I understand your case on Kittle. I was there, but but then I was just like, yeah, if he has three touchdowns and the stat line you gave was three catches. Yeah. So then it was like, ah, I think look at the receivers that have won it recently. Cup and Edelman volume, volume, yeah, volume. So if I'm going elsewhere, that's that's where I would go. Try to find someone that brings volume to the table. I mean, Rice is 70. That's a lot. Yeah, I wouldn't. It, yeah. it runs in the Mahomes. It would Mahomes have to be a low-scoring game. Double-digit yeah. receptions, maybe nine. Right. Um, but, yeah, he would have to do that. Okay, let me, let's throw out the other name that we're not talking about, and we have to because of Tay-Tay or whatever you want to say. <laughs> Uh, the number's been dropping. What are we at? 17 to 1? It was like 26 a week ago, I think. 25. Yeah. I yeah. know right when the Super Bowl was set, it was like 20. Yeah. And it was bet down, and we've been at 17 since. Yeah. I think that's the best number in the market that FanDuel's offering. Do you realize that 20% of the MVP vote is fan vote? Oh, I had no idea how that worked, honestly. Yeah, I don't know if that's a recent change or what, but it's a big part of this conversation, is it not? <laughs> yeah, that is. It's <laughs> <mean>, very relevant. <laughs> the Swifties are voting whether the Chiefs win or lose the Super Bowl. Huh. Like Kelsey's going to take that 20%, right? Huh. Interesting. No is this doubt. like delegates? Like, do we get like a percentage of the 20% or how does that work? Don't bring in Nate Silver, whatever you right. decide to do. <laughs> we need Steve Kornacki up on the board. I know it's not an NBC game, but Steve Kornacki in the, the khaki pants. Like, let's get him in here. I think people would love that. I Kelsey has a, I said two on the Casey side. Obviously, I'm talking about Mahomes and Kelsey. 
Mm-hmm. If he continue, he throws up another stat line like he has in these other playoff games. That's going to be that's going to be real, and people might just give it to him. They'll say Mahomes going to get back again. He already has Super Bowl MVPs. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to win another. Like, let's just. I mean, what he's done. It, it's not the number one sports podcast. It's the number one sports pod, number one podcast. Period. Like yeah. it's just when you take a step back and how popular he is and his brother and her. Like it is unbelievable. I know a lot of us in our realm are so sick of it. I'm, I love it. I'm, it's great. <laughs> you know, I love it because. My nine-year-old daughter's asking me who I think is going to win in the game. Exactly. It's and great. you know what? We, yeah. should, we would never have that conversation it's great. otherwise. Yeah, it's always absolutely. It's Taylor Swift. Yeah. So bring, bring everybody in. I'm fine with it. I, I don't mind it, but I, I understand why some people are sick of it. But you know what, guys? In a week, you're going to be sad because we're not going to have any football. We're going to have no Taylor Swift props to talk about. You, you won't like that feeling either. But Kelsey's got a real chance, man. I, I I'm thinking about taking that 17 just because of the fan boat and how he's performed of late. And like, that's a big part of it too, is he has a 30% target share during the playoffs. He's getting some deep work. He has a 27% red zone target share too. So it's not just like the narrative. Like he actually is like, I don't think the gap between him and Rasheed Rice should be as big as it is. That part to me is kind of weird, but yeah. Yeah, like I think other than that, like there is a lot of reason to think Kelsey is like at least live, especially once you factor in what you mentioned, the fan vote. I think that's very interesting. So but also Rice is not as established as the other receivers that have won this award. Sure. That's the that's the other part. But he gets the volume aspect uh, Mm -hmm. because he has a uh, 28 percent target share during the playoffs, but he's not getting a lot of downfield work. That was always my issue with Cup, too, is like not a lot of downfield work, but like. Yeah, I think they're – I get why he's 70. I don't think that gap should be quite as big as it is. I'm not going to back Rice. I'm not going to bet him. But, like, yeah, I, I think that as weird as it is, Kelsey may still be the better bet at 17, despite the fact I think that gap is too large. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. He should be lower. Like, why is, why is Ayuk so much shorter? Yeah. Right? Why are the, the 49ers receivers – I guess that's the Purdy effect. It probably is the party effect. Yeah. Yeah. And they're slight favorites too. Um, So I think that that part is there too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get to the reason we brought you on here, Joe. Let's talk about the nonsense. Uh, We got a lot of weird props we can bet here. In Illinois specifically, we can bet on the Gatorade color and the anthem length. I'm sure you've been grinding some Reba McIntyre tape out here the past week or so. Uh, So what's your read on uh, those bets? The ones we can actually bet here legally in our great state of Illinois. Okay, so the Reba one is fascinating. Now, I'm a person, Jim's team me up here because I bet on the anthem every year. Like if you're <laughs> telling me, Joe, you get one bet on the NFL. You get one bet on the NFL Super Bowl. Like, what is it? I'm probably picking the anthem. I don't know why. <laughs> I obsess over it. And <laughs> I just, I got to stop. Don't you love it on, on Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it? Like, a, as soon as the Super Bowl is about to start, yes. everybody screenshots their stopwatch on their phone. Yep. And they, they all put it out there. This is what I got. What do you got? And we've got the rehearsal times that sometimes get out there. And then people get mad about it on Friday before the Super Bowl. And then you see a rapid line movement. The whole thing. I just bring it all on. I love it all. Now, typically... We're guessing just shot in the dark, waiting on information. We have no idea. It's someone that has not performed the national anthem. Not the case with Reba. No. Quick YouTube search. You're going to you're going to find it all over the place. Now, what have we seen in this uh, market? It was 83 and a half seconds early on. It is 90 and a half now. Yeah. (laughs) No. I do not agree with that move, Jim Sonis. Okay. I Reba's quick. It's like, how long do I wait? When am I being greedy? Right. Do I need to keep playing this all the way up on the under? Or am I just going to be wrong? Like, she's a lot <laughs> older now. Does that mean she's going to take take her time? That We hear that every year from people. They're just like, right. oh, well, they're going to soak up their time, blah, blah, blah. That's not Reba's game, man. No. Like we can go back to the 1974 national finals rodeo, which she took <laughs> one twelve. We're talking 72 seconds and we're getting 90 and a half right now. So you're looking for alt unders is what you're saying, right? 
1985 World Series Game 1, St. Louis, Kansas City. 65 seconds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is not a joke. On the high end, uh, the the Marlins Indians at the time, World Series Game 3 in 1997, that was a minute 22. Okay. We're still not there. We're still actually far away. Yeah. And that was on the high end. Um, I saw people putting out there that like six years ago, she did the Celebrity Hope softball game. <laughs> and that was a minute 18. Also, that's longer. under. Yeah. Like, there's no instance of it over. I don't see any instances of it even being close to the 90 and a half, which is currently available. So, yeah, when when do I wait until? I'll tell you, if you wait until Friday, it's going to be too late. Yeah, I'm playing the under 100 percent, Jim. Um, so I cannot wait. And I feel like we have a big edge and people love to bet the over. So how much are, how much of the over money coming in is going to drive this number up? I can't believe we're at 90. Maybe this is the top. Maybe I, sure. I would think that it is. I love the under. I also throw out there. I know it's not one that you mentioned, but it kind of goes hand in hand because the performances are back to back. Uh, Post Malone, man. He does he drag it out? Does he, he? This is not listed, right? I don't okay, know. Okay, I was gonna, I was gonna start way. looking for it. If I don't need to like look for it, like we got total Canadian viewers for the game up in FanDuel Canada. Like we got a lot of stuff. I don't think there's anything on Post Malone here for me. Okay, we don't have that. All right. Well, so he's doing America the Beautiful. Okay, and it's listed. You could find it at one hundred nine and a half seconds. And so, like, I was on YouTube scouring and watching some of the covers that he's done. Man, yeah. does he take his time? His musicians take their time. I was watching him on uh, Howard Stern doing like some Pearl Jam covers. Like, it's it was highly entertaining. But, anyways, um, and that, and I was looking at other singers and how long it typically takes with this song. Like, I was watching uh, Beyonce singing for Obama. Like, there were all sorts of Ray Charles. Like, they're knocking on three minutes. Yeah. And this is 109 and a half. So anyways, I'm going way over on that one. Uh, so alt overs for Post Malone, alt yes, unders for Rita McIntyre. That, that's where I'm at. We parlay that. those somewhere. You know, we'll work on it. We'll work I'll try. It. I'll yeah, try. Yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, well, there was some spots on the Reba unders. If you go, if you take a lower number, you can get some big plus money. Oh, yeah. So maybe yeah. you just ladder the Reba right. under that's right <laughs> there we go <laughs> um did did you guys did you guys have uh who the mvp gonna thank first after they're awarded no i don't think so okay because uh, i saw like popular. okay i saw some controversy though because it was like think so, a higher power or something like that and they were like does that count taylor swift and like you know <laughs> <laughs> who said that i i'm i'm not gonna you know higher power aka taylor one no. of the same one I, in the same. There's props like that all over the place. Oh yeah. Is is Hunt going to mention her name? Is is Romo going to say Jimmy or Tay Tay first? Like, there's all sorts of stuff. Jimmy. Go <laughs> yeah. Is he called Jimmy? Uh, uh, Jim slash Jimmy. Okay. Okay. Um. So. Oh wait. Actually, no. We do have this. Fanduel Canada has it. I lied. It's right here. Which there one? Uh. Which the. One? Who will they think first? Yeah. God or religious figure? I think Swift should be lumped into this. I. I just you know. I think okay. that that would be an oversight not to Whoa. include her. That is uh that's that's crazy because I've seen very different odds yeah. all around. And I've seen teammates being the favorite, and we're getting that at plus two ninety. Got to run to Canada for it. But okay. you're not that far. Like you could make that trip. So could you. You're closer than me that's by true. about a half hour. That's um, true. Yeah. I'll say this Mahomes last year, team thanks teammates first. Um, I think his, Purdy would. His, okay, so <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm a loser. I was so I went back and I watched the NFC Championship post game coverage when uh -huh. they grabbed Purdy on the stage, uh, yeah. straight handed. And what do you think the first thing he said? Wh which which category would this fall into? Uh, what did he say? He said, "Glory to God!" First, wow. Okay, so that could explain why that's the favorite because Purdy, the, the Niners are more the favorite. Yeah, the, favorite. Yeah, 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 okay. the quarterback. And so maybe, but I still think minus one fifty is kind of crazy yeah. because I think most players end up thinking their teammates first. If it's why? usually teammates are fans, and fans is a long shot here. Which coach should be longer? Um, yeah, who thinks he, he's not? Nobody's thinking Shanahan or Reed first. No. Yeah, 
does Chubba Purdy get credit if uh, you know sixteen to one? Are we really ch- thinking Chubba Purdy? You know, is no. he number one on the list here? I, I probably not. You know, Prob- no shots to Chubba, obviously, but no. I don't think that that's quite going to get the nod there. Teammates has value here. Yeah. Okay. So get teammates plus two ninety up in yeah. Canada, FanDuel Canada to get that one. Um, I, I like that you actually looked at the tape for this too. This is the analysis <laughs> we need. Because it's usually teammates. And... Well, I expected the Reba stuff. Like that, that I knew going in for you, Joe. Like that's yeah. that's baseline for you. Like that's surface level Joe Ostrowski. Looking at the NFC thing to, to see if Brock Purdy thanks God, that's next level. So like, that's good. <laughs> we've seen Mahomes talk post game a million times. Yeah. How many times have we seen Purdy doing that? Everybody else gets all the credit, but we haven't seen a lot of Brock Purdy. It's, he's forgotten about unless he's ripping cam newton um <laughs> that happened over the weekend well like, see was, the reason like, i thought teammates for him wow. is because uh back in week before the ravens game he was like mccaffrey should be should be mvp and i bet mccaffrey because of that because like i mean if he's gonna say it like that could start a narrative kind of thing you know uh that's why i thought teammates but i think the nfc championship game is probably the better template to use for him so i watched mccaffrey talk too yeah <laughs> so and I don't know how you would go. Like he went into the teammates, but the first thing he did was was just like George Kittle too. Yeah, shouted at the fans. Okay, so would they rule that fans first? And what I is Kelsey's know. Kelsey's tagline? Is you got to fight for the right to party? Yeah, that's not what does thanking that mean? anybody. That's alluding to the fans, though. It's maybe that could be. Yeah, you know, man, there are so many engagement props out there. It oh, is there. So is an FanDuel over- Canada had that, and I think I got taken off the board because the under or no got hammered so hard. I don't think. Oh really? Oh sorry. Here we go. Um. Uh. Will there be a doink? It, co- it all comes back to doinks. It, it's back. Uh. Will the MVP mention Taylor Swift in his speech? No is minus eleven hundred. Why would they say her name? Why? I mean, basically, you just just bet Kelsey to win MVP instead. You can't That's seventeen to one. This is six to one. Boy, there there are a lot of props all of a sudden on Cal Yuschek's wife. Yep. Her, yep, just because she designed. Oh no, uh, the Kelsey proposal is still up. Now it's minus two thousand though. <laughs> on a no, not eleven hundred. Yep. So yeah. yeah, there's no. He's not winning the Super Bowl and proposing to Taylor Swift. We think average Americans. That's cheesy to do at a sporting event. Yeah. I mean, he does have that cheese, but he is Sh- cheesy. Yeah. Swift is not standing for that. No, that ain't happening. The implied odds here are ninety five percent. There's probably still value on no out there in Canada for you if you want it. Yeah, there's some. Uh, I'm guessing limits on this are not very high, so you might not make a lot of money off. This, they're fun to talk about. Yeah, they're, they're very fun <laughs> to talk about. But the reality is, neither of us are betting any Taylor Swift props. No, because I'm not driving to Canada, so no. I'm not going to do that. But you know, people out there want to have some fun. Um, you could do that. Any other uh, weird props you're seeing out there, Joe? There's halftime props up. Anything else you like? Uh, do we have first song? Yes, uh, Canada does. Let me go here. Well, ca- Canadians get everything fun. I know. Okay, so uh, Lil John is now minus one seventy two to perform at halftime with Usher. That was minus one fifteen today, so that's moved a lot. So they must have eyes on Lil John in Vegas. Uh, first song is "My Way" by Usher at even money. I don't know what "My Way" is, to be fully honest. <laughs> and I thought uh, OMG I was a. I thought that was a Will I Am song. I've not done my research for this one yet. Um, above where you are on the screen, did I see eight and a half in the over under number of songs? Uh, yeah. Oh boy. Minus 125 both ways. You got to have a big edge here to like it. Well, do you know how many songs Rihanna did last year? Uh, 10? 15. Whew. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there's going to be probably uh, some collabs going on uh-huh. on stage. They shorten all the songs. It feels like they try to get as many songs in as possible. If you go back a couple of years ago, let's see, eight. We had 11, looks like 11 or 12 when it was Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar. Like, I would think that eight and a half is going to be long gone, right? So like the last time. Your, I... Am I sensing even the a Joe trip to Canada here now? Is that what I'm sensing? Even the weekend went over eight and a half when nobody was there. <laughs> that was 
That was the only one that was close. Yes. Yeah. I would be all about that over eight and a half. That okay. would be my favorite one on halftime. Okay. I was looking up set lists and yeah, yeah is very popular um, in recent years to, to open with. Okay. But I just think of, you know, getting everybody pumped up, standing up at the, at their party, dancing, whatever. Isn't, oh my God, just OMG, the, the way to open it. Yeah. Is the closer. Like, is there a last song performed? Um, Last oh, you would song. go yeah, there. Yes, plus two hundred. That's what that to be the the chalk here. Yeah. Okay. First I do song, also. I agree with you. That's not the first song. There's also some songs like this is a family audience. There are some Usher songs which I wonder. No, no, like, no. Rihanna. Gonna... I thought that last year, but then Rihanna came out with "B Word Better Have My Money," and like I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm wrong. That's fine. You know, like cool. I got this wrong. I'm fine with that. The handicap was off. My bad, guys. So you're telling me we might hear nice and slow? Maybe. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> we might. We might. <laughs> I mean, halftime show will be at like uh, eight thirty Eastern, somewhere around there. That's fine, right? And and plus, it's like very short, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we can make that joke too. Yes. Like, these songs are, very, <laughs> are going to be very short, so they uh, move on, and it's like, whoa! Th- nobody even realized that it happened. Confessions is twenty three. Confessions part two is twenty three to one. To open, it's not happening. No, that's not. That's not. That's not going to happen. A lot of bad money in this market, I think. But over eight and a half, I know it's way yeah. juiced, but I. That's a bad number. Okay, I like Just, it. These, it's not even close. We're get, we're getting to the twelve fifteen range yeah. most years, and it feels like they're trying to squeeze as many songs as possible. I was trying to see if I can get an alt over on this, but uh, no, we're just eight, we're stuck at eight <laughs> and a half. Giving years. us alt. <laughs> I mean, you guys are napping over there. Let's get some alts up for the halftime. That's show. right. So you got to check though, this. right? You got to be yeah. sure before you before you just close the tab. You got to yeah. make, make sure. Yeah, maybe by the end of the week. I mean, who knows? Like I mentioned earlier, every time you, you refresh your favorite sports book, like oh, there's like yeah. fit another tab. That <laughs> I don't remember being there a little bit earlier. So we are on the Reba under at ninety and a half. Yes, we are on Post Malone over. Whatever number that was, I can't remember. 109 and a half seconds. 109 and a half for Post Malone. Yeah. And over eight and a half songs for Usher during halftime. Usher plus friends during halftime at minus 125. That That's sounds like a good list to have. Super to Bowl now. Yeah. That's my, I like that. Okay. I like well, Usher and Reba the most for sure. Yeah. That is Joe Ostrowski. Joe, this is the exact reason I had you on. This is exactly what I wanted. 10 out of 10, no notes, zero disappointment. This is awesome. It was a pleasure having you on. A pleasure to talk to you once again. Uh, Good luck and enjoy the Super Bowl. Uh, You do the same, Jim, and uh, everybody listening to Covering the Spread. Thank you so much. Always enjoy this visit. Yeah, find Joe on Twitter at Joe Ostrowski. You can check him out on BetQL Daily every weekday uh, as well. You can find him on 670 The Score in Chicago on Saturday mornings. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnets. You can find me on threads at Jim Sonnets and check out FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Back once again tomorrow talking about some same game parlays for this game. We'll talk to all of you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 